Good morning horse racing fans and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're still all in there fighting as we head towards day five of Royal Ascot. It's been a pretty good meeting for me so far. Day one and two, you literally couldn't back a loser. Day three and four, they've been okay, not really winning but not really losing, which isn't a bad thing when you consider how tough the action is. But it was an electric start, as I said, we had winners 200 to one places and we only made YouTube videos on day one and two so you've kind of missed out the bad not the bad days but the not so good days and hopefully we'll be back with a few winners to finish it off but first we are one subscriber away from 300 so if one of you people watching out there could subscribe and reach that next milestone I would be forever grateful and hopefully I'll be able to repay you with a couple of winners through the day, starting off with the Chesham Stakes listed contest over the seven furlongs. Good to firm, 14 runners go to post and we've got Alfred Munnings who's pretty much even money favourite. There's just a few bookies off all in 11 to 10 which could be generous, who knows at the end of the day because this horse was so impressive on debut at Leopardstown, won by four and a half lengths and didn't really have to be asked to do so to be honest. Ryan Moore keeps the light today and stayed on so strongly in the final furlong and was eased down towards the finish. It was that easy. Horses don't really win on debut like that very often and especially when they come from the Aden O'Brien yard. So I expect a lot of improvement to come from a yard who are just starting to bang in the winners here. Didn't have the fastest start to the Ascot meeting but they're getting a few winners on the board now and Ryan Moore is the man to follow at Ascot along with Danny Tudhub at the minute. So at 11 to 10 I think this horse is going to take the world of beating. There could be a few potential improvers in the field. There's 14 in the race after all. I'm not convinced by Dettori's mount in this. I think he's got to improve quite a little bit to get involved. I actually do quite fancy John Gosden's other one, a Faisal Road who won at Yarmouth. The top three Finch Charm changing colours and Faisal Road. Well, the second and third have won since, and I think the winner had a little bit in hand this day. Wasn't given the toughest time by Jack Mitchell. I think this is probably going to be the main English challenger in this race, although it looks like the Irish will be getting off to a winning start in the first race. On to the Jersey Stakes, and it's a pretty trappy affair, and that's reflected in the betting. Star Girls a la Mal. I'm going to go with Trent by Henry de Bombhead. Well, that was a good fourth in the I, in the Irish 1000 guineas, I should say. Was well beaten by Homeless Songs at the end of the day, but was just about half a length, three quarters of a length behind Tuesday, who won the English because he worked so impressively. So that form might have worked out pretty nicely at the end of the day. Stays, drops back a furlong in trip, actually. I'm not totally sure if that's going to suit, but we'll find out, I think. The one that does interest me, well, there's quite a few that do interest me, Noble Truth, that horse definitely sets the standard for William Buick and Charlie Appleby. They'll be looking to get a few winners on the board today, especially in the race after where they've got an odds on shot in Hurricane Lane. But I think this one is going to be primed for this. It's been a while since his latest run at Newmarket where he won by six lengths. But the horse I'm going to be siding with today is Monadar. Side bin to our Jim Crowley teaming up for Shadwell. Now this horse has had an unusual campaign. It made its debut out in Maidan, out in Dubai. Then it just held on to win at Newcastle on the 10th of May. And then it won ran and won, I should say. It was a pretty nice win at Kempton. Carried 10 stone to gave away lumps of weight that day. The second audience, that's a decent horse, rated in the hundreds for John Gosden. And them two pulled clear. So I think there's more to come from Monodar. Each way at 7 to 1 wouldn't be a bad bet for me, hopefully, to get in a nice, juicy winner in for the day. Now, the next few races, I think. It's going to be tough for the favourite to get beat in these ones. Hurricane Lane, rated 123. His last one was in the Arc de Triomphe where he finished third. And I think that just a repeat of that one should see him in the winner's enclosure. He's got decent form on good ground. Hasn't run on good to firm ground. That would be a little bit of a concern. But he doesn't carry a penalty for his latest win in the group. One five to six could be a steal if you look at the second favourite boom isn't really a world beater for Eden O'Brien. You'd be surprised if this horse 
would be winning this group too. So Hurricane line at five to six is going to be proven quite tough to beat for me. On to the Platinum Jubilee Stakes. Now just to mention a horse that I put up, anti post I think it was 14 or 16 to 1 Minzal for Owen Burrows and Jim Crowley. I'm hoping for a bit day for Jim Crowley. I fancy him on a few of his mounts. But this horse came back at York in the Duke of York Clipper Logistics Stakes Group 2 won by Highfield Princess and I think it was a little bit of a flat performance by Mindal this day. I expected a little bit more, but that was a group two. He could come on for this one, and I think he needs to, but he does have good form at Ascot. He was third in the British Champion Sprint Stakes, just beaten two lengths by Creative Force at the end of the day. If, <coughs> excuse me, a repeat of that one should be seeing go close, but I do think he has a little bit to find with the favourite at home affairs, who is my nap of the day at 5-2. to two. It was 2-1, to one. there's been a little bit of a drift going for this horse, but if it's anything like Nature Strip, the other Aussie, who are quite closely matched from what I can see, obviously I'm not a pro in the Australian form, but home affairs has beaten Nature Strip before. I'm surprised they're running this way around, to be honest. I think home affairs might have a little bit more pace than Nature Strip, but that's what I thought prior to Nature Strip bolting up by five lengths. But the step up to six furlongs, well, it's gone over six furlongs before, to be fair, and it's won over six furlongs, so it might be making a mountain out of a molehill. But I think five furlongs might be a little bit better because it is a stiff six furlongs but still before I blabber on too much five to two about this horse James McDonald taking the light should be winning at five to two if it's anything like nature strip this should be an impressive win because I don't think the English horse is set too high of a standard to be honest next up is the big handicap over five furlongs the Wokingham stakes I'm gonna side with one a huge price Ventura Tormenta 50 to one, I just think could be a little bit better than a handicap mark of a hundred. It made its debut in the Norfolk Stakes when finishing sixth on debut in the Group Two at Ascot in 2020. Now that he got pitched in at the deep end, and he kind of backed it up and improved from there. To be honest, he had some ni a nice win at Yarmouth next time out. He was fifth in the superlative stakes at Newmarket. All good form behind horses like Master of the Season, other big big reputation horses then he won a group two out in France and then he just kind of bombed out in the Keeneland Phoenix stakes in at the Curra and he kind of just went amiss from there he didn't he was tailed off at Newmarket and he's been off the track since he's been off the track for 21 months actually but I think when horses are returning from a long break, they get them fully primed. He's drawn in store 17. Sean Levy takes the ride, teams up with Richard Han, and them two always do well when teaming up. And the jockey won the big handicap yesterday. So at 50 to 1, you just think there could be a little bit more to come if you can cope with being off the track for such a long time. So 50 to 1, obviously, I'm not expecting much, but I just think he's the interesting horse in the race. On to the 535 and James McDonald again he's on another favourite for George Berry. Now this horse won by 11 lengths at Pontefract and he was won again by 5.5 lengths at Salisbury so you don't know how good this horse actually is. He hasn't beaten much but he's been beating it impressively. That's 11 to, two, 11 to 4 I should say. Mark of 95 might be lenient in time but the one I'm going to side with is my jockey to follow for the flat season Benoit de la Say. He's on Aldous Huxley for John Gosden, who you assume Frankie de Torres picked to ride Hanition after that horse won quite impressively at Sandown just a couple of weeks ago. But I think this horse carrying top weight, obviously Benoit takes off his five pounds, which could prove very valuable. It's got hot form behind good horses. It got within two lengths of New London and it was a pretty good run in the listed race at Goodwood where Lionel won for Jamie Spencer, that was given a very good ride, and I just think that the horse that I'm tipping up today, Aldous Huxley, was a little bit unlucky. He was led, and he might have got a little bit lonely out in front. The soft ground might not have suited as well, so he drops back in trip today on better ground, nine to one. John Stall one as well. That might be a good thing over the one mile, two mile trip. If Ben Marder, let's say, it keeps him uncomplicated gets anywhere near the front i think this horse should be able to stay on and grab a place at the end of the day final race is the queen alexander two miles five furlongs true is still 
in the race, whether this horse stays in the race, who knows, at the end of the day, because the ground is good to firm. Obviously, connections have sided it when it's been good to firm before, but this is a winnable race if Trushan shows up. If Trushan shows up, I'll have a few pounds on this horse, because I think even though he might not like the ground, he's got that much class, he stays all day, so at 7-4 to four, he should be winning. If Trushan comes out, I think Wordsworth is the one to side with, who might be a little bit of a tripless horse, I don't think Aidan O'Brien exactly knows the trip, but he's stepping up massively in trip, almost a mile from his last run at the club, but he has good form at Ascot, he was beaten under a length by Princess Zoe, Quickthorn Enemy, that was a pretty nice group three at the end of the day, I don't think this horse is any stronger if Trushan does come out, so it would be a bet, I think he, he, I think he's a bit of a slow horse, who knows if he's got stamina, but I think he's a little bit of a slow horse, he's shown that when he was second in the Queen's Vars, I think he's a stayer, and of course this is one of the biggest staying horses of the year in terms of distance, so I think if Trushan comes out, Wordsworth would be the bet, if Trushan stays in, Trushan would be the bet to finish off Royal Ascot, thanks a lot for watching, and as I said, do subscribe if you knew, can we get to 300, that would be very appreciative, but thanks a lot for watching, hopefully we'll be back in a few winners today, and I'll see you next time.